Welcome to the Austin P Experience Podcast, where we are highlighting why we are the premier university in the region. I'm your host, Grayson Nicholson, and today's guest is Dr. Prentice Chandler, the Dean of the Erickson College of Education. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Chandler. Thanks for having me. Can you introduce our listeners to the Grow Your Own program and explain what it is? Yes, the Grow Your Own program is getting tons of press these days in Clarksville and around the nation. Before I get started, I want to thank the president of APSU and the provost, because without their support, this could not be possible. Um, You would think that support for colleges of education would be a pretty standard thing around the country. Um, It is not, and so we're super grateful to have those uh, folks backing us up. Um, So our program is a three-year bachelor's program uh, in education, uh, where they also get a degree in education and special education. Uh, In the program, they always also work as educational assistants in the schools, uh, full-time, with full pay and benefits. Uh, They take their courses at APSU in a variety of formats, so that's online, uh, hybrid, and face-to-face. Um, they are also current. They are also at the same time an employee and a student, which makes which is the apprenticeship aspect. So they are sort of learning and earning at the same time. Um, they are also learning to be teachers from what Tennessee considers to be the best teachers in the state. Uh, these are what are called level four and five teachers. Uh, there's a metric that the state uses to ass- uh, assess teachers, and so our apprentices are with the best teachers um, in the state. You've probably heard this part, that this program is completely tuition-free. I said tuition-free one more time, tuition-free to students. Uh, And again, this was named back in January of 2022 as the first federally registered teaching apprenticeship uh, in the nation, uh, in history. So we're the the first ones to to pull that off. That's awesome. Um, Before we go to the next question, I I do want to, for the listeners, uh, clarify a couple of terms. Uh, When we use the word grow your own, we mean that we are actively recruiting people who are of the community, from the community, who care about the community, who are not leaving the community, who want to teach in the community. And so historically, uh, colleges of education don't really focus on recruiting those people. We sort of wait for people to come to us. And so the, the idea behind Grow Your Own is finding people in the community to teach our children. One of the things that leads to teacher shortage is people leave the profession. And one of the re- there's lots of reasons people leave. Uh, one of the reasons people leave is they're not from that community. So if you, go to, if you go to a university and you land your first job in a neighboring district, maybe it's a rural district that doesn't have as many resources, oftentimes you will wait for a job near home or back in your hometown to open up. You'll leave the rural district that's sometimes more in need. And it's just a, it's a constant turnover in those rural districts. With this, we're seeking people that we don't think are going anywhere. Right? They are, again, they, they love their communities. It also probably makes a better teacher that it, people who care about their community or more invested in their community probably make better teachers. Do people, most people that graduate from here, are they they're being placed in CMCSS schools? So they are being placed in the district that they are, um, so if they're, in, if they're in the Dixon cohort, they, have, they go back to Dixon and teach. So the, yeah. But most of the 80 that we've graduated so far are Clarksville, Montgomery County. Very cool. The term residency simply means more time in the field. So if you've heard of student teaching, you know that student teaching is a 15 week experience where people just kind of fake it until they make it for 15 weeks. In our program, people spend three years in schools working with children before they become a teacher of record. And then lastly, apprenticeship, which is getting all the news, all the national press. That is a designation from the Department of Labor Uh, which simply means that you are able to earn money while you learn a skill or trade. And so they're sort of sort of similar. They get used interchangeably, but I wanted to clarify that too. Thank you. This is a, the Grow Your Own program is very unique. Austin P uh, put this on the map, right? Yes. We were the, again, we, we started Grow Your Own back in 2018 and that was adopted by the state of Tennessee which then became the first uh, registered apprenticeship, which is now kind of moving across the country. So yeah, started here. I I think we should trademark the the phrase birthplace of uh, teaching apprenticeships, Clarksville, Tennessee. Love that. So um, how did the Grow Your Own program initially come into existence? Can you share the backstory and motivation behind its creation? Yeah, so I became Dean back in uh, the summer of 2017 and it became clear pretty quickly 
that the first thing I needed to do was get the relationship with the school district back on track. Uh, that's not uncommon for colleges of education and school districts relationship to either be strained or kind of stale. Um, but that was the first thing that we, we got to work on and that was to let partnership work and working with the schools to be the focus of everything that we do. My thought at the time was if you can do partnerships well, everything else will follow. Everything else will fall into place. So one of the first things that we did with our partners was um, several meetings uh, over the course of several months uh, where we did SWOT analysis, where we looked at the strengths and weaknesses of, of each organization. And what came out of those very difficult, at sometimes difficult conversations, was the fact that our goals and the school district's goals were exactly the same, which is good news, because now you know what to focus on. And so the, the goals that came out of those meetings were the fact that there was an impending teacher shortage, which I think everybody knows about. We wanted more uh, diversity in the teaching ranks, and we wanted more teachers in high need licensure areas like special education and math. And so from that point forward, we, we had our sort of marching orders. We just had to create a program that could, uh, could make those things happen. Um, the other motivation for us was to find an affordable pathway for people to be teachers. So we'll talk a little bit about that later, but that's also one of the hallmarks of this program too. And, and that is, if you want to teach and you want to serve your community, then, then we as universities should find a way to make it happen. Yes, absolutely. How has the Grow Your Own program impacted your perspective on education and teacher development? Yeah, so I think the first, the, the clearest, first and clearest thing that pops out to me is that um, I have rethought teacher ed in one sort of fundamental way, and that is that we should be working with school districts and school partners as much as possible. Historically, that is not the model that we follow in teacher ed. Uh, I often say that teacher education should be a joint effort between colleges and districts because we have talent and they have talent and we have resources and they have resources, but we were doing it very siloed before and now it's, it's almost like we're one big organization working towards the same goal. Um, uh, another, uh, another perspective that shifted for me is the idea that the more time people spend in schools, the better. I think everybody kind of intuitively knows that, um, but this is the first time that I've seen a program where, where uh, students spend years uh, in the field, like a, like a medical professional, like a surgeon uh, does in, in their field. Um, I also highlighted that we have a chance to do things differently just because it's been done the same way forever doesn't mean we can't do it differently. Uh, I think COVID showed us that we can in fact shift and change. And then I think the big takeaway for me um, is that the narrative around teaching and teacher education is uh, inaccurate. Uh, and so um, when I say that, I mean when you watch the news, the evening news or the local news or the national news, the narrative around education in general is pretty bleak that no one wants to teach, children are unruly, parents don't care. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, uh, the sky is falling narrative. And what I have found in this program is that when we make teaching, and the three words I use are accessible, attractive, and affordable. When you do those three things, accessible, attractive, and affordable, um, people, people line up to teach. So we actually have a waiting list for people to get into this program. Um, and so I think part of that narrative is true. It's not completely false. I'm not saying that it is. It's not fake news. Um, but I will say that, that if you want teacher education to succeed, that's, for me, that's sort of the, the secret sauce, uh, accessible, attractive, and affordable. A partnership seemed to play a crucial role in the success of the Grow Your Own program. Can you dive into the importance of these partnerships and how they contribute to its effectiveness? Yeah, so it's almost, we, without partnerships, none of this would be possible. So it's almost sort of a misnomer to talk about partnerships uh, separately. Um, everything that we've been able to do uh, is the result of partnerships with Clarksville, Montgomery County, and all of our other districts. Um, every college of education in the country will claim they have partnerships, and I would claim that they think they have partnerships, but not like the ones that we have. And so uh, when I talk to our faculty, I frame partnerships as uh, little p partnerships and big p partnerships. Little p partnerships are the ways that most colleges of education operate. Uh, these are transactional, superficial, reactive moves. 
So uh, an example would be that a school district needs a math teacher or math placement, so they call the college and ask for a math intern. That is very low level, transactional, superficial, and reactive. Big P partnerships is what I claim that we do at Austin P is where you have partnerships that are transformational, deep, and proactive. And the idea there is to not just run programs, not just have degree programs, but do, do it in such a way that you are working with your partners to change, um, to solve, not to change, to solve persistent issues in education. And so that's, that's what we're doing. Um, we're not just talking about issues, we're actually working with our partners to solve issues. Um, the other thing I would point out about partnerships with this program is this is the first time in my career that I uh, have been a part of something where school districts, um, state department, departments across the university campus, Department of Labor, Department of Education, the Teachers Association have all worked together on something. Um, and it's really kind of cool to, cool to see it unfold. Um, when people ask, why does your program look the way that it looks? Why does it operate that way? The only answer to that question is because that's what our districts told us that they needed. So partnership is this work. This work is partnership. Yeah, absolutely. So how many students have successfully completed this program? Do you have any um, success stories or examples of their impact on the community? Yeah, so um, the, the big success is that we have um, children have the teachers that they need. So that's, I know that goes without saying, but I went ahead and said it anyway. We've had two gra uh, graduating cohorts. Uh, each cohort has 40 students. And so we've had about 80 students graduate from the program. Uh, they're on a different schedule than, than, than traditional teacher ed, so they actually graduate each August. And so I think a couple of years ago, we had the largest uh, and most diverse graduating class in college history, which was kind of exciting. Um, they also, again, uh, kids have the teachers that they need. We, we have stories all the time from our apprentices. Uh, again, to remind the, the listeners, the apprenticeship simply means that if you are a federally registered apprenticeship, then you have access to federal funding. And so um, when I say access to federal funding, it, could, it goes to the school district to pay for a lot of things. And one, one story that I recall is that we had uh, someone in the, one of our cohorts who was uh, a single mother, uh, trying to raise a couple of kids, and she was working in the schools all day long, uh, trying to do her best uh, in her job and to go to school at the same time, but she was not showing up to work and she was late to work. Come to find out that her car was basically broken down, she had maxed out all of her credit cards, and so she was on the brink of not being able to, to finish the program because of her transportation. And once the district found that out, and because they are a registered apprenticeship, they were able to apply for fund for funding to help this, this woman get her car fixed. That's and awesome. so she was able to get her car fixed, she finished the program, and now she's uh, a paid teacher uh, with a degree and a license. So the, again, that's just one story, there are several others. The big takeaway for me is, uh, if we want people to go into teaching, we have to remove barriers so they can be successful. Not hold their hand and do the work for them, but if there's things we can, if there are barriers that we can take out of the way, we need to do so. Mentorship is a significant aspect of this program. Can you elaborate on the mentorship dynamics between the Grow Your Own students, district staff, and professors? And how does it enhance the learning experience? Yeah, so um, ideally, in a perfect world, uh, teacher education would take the best parts of the university and the best parts of the district. And again, for the first time in my career, I think that's what we've done. Uh, the good news for people in Clarksville, Tennessee, is that this is one of the best school districts I've ever seen. You know, I, I've done I've done teacher education uh, in Alabama, I've done teacher education in Cincinnati, and now I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee, and, and what we're doing here uh, the, is better than any place I've been. Um, it's an attempt to connect theory and practice, which is something that everybody in a College of Ed says they do. Um, I'm not sure they do it like we are. Um, I would also point out something I've said before is that our residents are working with uh, what Tennessee considers to be the best teachers in the state. So um, historically, we put student teachers with whoever has a degree in a particular area. So if you're a, if you're a history student, you wanna teach history, you get placed with a history teacher. That teacher may or may not be a good teacher themselves, 
And so we, we've, we've done away with that guesswork there. Uh, they're, they're truly working with some of the best folks, best teachers in the state. Um, and then lastly, I would say that our students are learning from the, the, the great faculty that we have in the College of Education. One of the great parts about uh, being the dean of a College of Education is that um, all of the faculty in my college have either been top-notch teachers themselves or educational leaders themselves. So it's, it's great to work with, uh, with that group. What do you believe are the key factors contributing to the program's success, and how have you seen it evolve over time? Yeah, so it looks differently than it did back in 2018. Uh, lots of mistakes and lots of lessons learned. Um, I think the biggest factor that leads to the success of the program is collaboration across organizations. And so uh, you'll probably not find a unit on our campus who doesn't think that they do collaborate, and I'm sure that's the case. Um, but collaboration between College of Education uh, and school districts and all those organizations I mentioned before, not to mention all of the units across Austin Peay State University that have made this thing happen, uh, all the way down to financial aid, to scheduling, um, to buying textbooks, on down the line. Uh, it literally has been a university-wide effort to make this happen. I haven't seen that anywhere else. Uh, and so uh, it, this program is successful because our community and our university wanted, to, wanted it to be successful. Um, also, I would point out that we uh, let go of the idea of trying to be perfect with, with all the things that we're doing. There's that expression that uh, perfection is the enemy of good. We are really good. We are really good, but we are not perfect. Um, and once we kind of let go of that idea in the beginning, uh, that, that helped us a lot. Um, and then lastly, sort of, it's, again, this is another mindset uh, issue. Um, a lot of times in universities, because we're, um, we're experts in our field and we have terminal degrees, we're really good at arguing and claiming to be right and winning arguments. And that's fine and good, uh, but I think it's more important that we get it right instead of trying to be right. And so I think a lot of times in the academy we want to be right. Uh, which is, again, great, uh, but when you're dealing with children and children's education and putting a, a, a good teacher in front of them, I'm less interested in winning an argument and more interested in, in making sure we get it right. So that's sort of a, for me personally, that's a, a kind of a mind shift uh, there. Lastly, can you provide an update on the current status of the program? What are the latest developments and future plans for Grow Your Own and CMCSS and other partner districts? Yeah, so the, the future plans are to keep this thing going as long as we can. <laughs> so uh, I would like to grow it as big as possible, as large as possible. Uh, again, this is the sort of birthplace of this movement. I do think it is a movement. Um, I've given uh, um, talks at conferences and some people kind of chuckle when I call it a movement. Um, but I'm right because this program has spread to 25 states. So we started uh, the first one in 2022, and the federal government has uh, designated 25 other states to be apprenticeship, apprenticeable states. And so it is a movement, and it started, started right here. Um, we have been highlighted in the Washington Post, uh, Education Week, and uh, this past summer, we had a congressional briefing in Washington, D.C., where we got to talk to some senators about the program. Um, we've, we've, we've extended the original program, the original work, to uh, rural districts in uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, Dixon, Cheatham, Robertson, and Hickman. Uh, and then we've also begun, uh, about a couple of years ago, we started working with community colleges to make the um, the tuition even more affordable. So working, working with community colleges uh, essentially cuts the, the cost of this program uh, in half. And we are, of course, currently looking to expand into all areas of the state, uh, again, working with community colleges wherever and uh, across, across the whole state. So we currently have about 200 students across all the cohorts, and so um, they're at different stages. And uh, once they finish their associates in teaching degree, associates in science and teaching degree, uh, they will come to us and we'll uh, get them to the finish line. Uh, again, if you didn't hear me before, the takeaway from this talk is that uh, people do want to teach. 
Okay, teaching is not dead. The profession is not a miserable existence. Uh, what we have to do is find a way at the university and at the district level to make teacher education as a profession affordable, accessible, uh, and attractive. Um, and when we do that, again, our experience shows us that we have um, hundreds of people who are lining up to, to be teachers. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chandler, for joining us on the podcast today uh, and giving our listeners a little insight on the Grow Your Own program and how Austin P is a crucial part of that. Thanks for having me.